Today, I'm gonna to share with you guys five beginner-friendly Python projects to help you get started in your Python journey. With over seven years in the education space, these are five projects that I give to my Python students, ensuring that they build on each other to help you create a strong foundation in programming. Are you ready? Let's dive into the episode. Welcome back guys to another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh. I'm stoked to have you guys back. Today's episode is a little bit different because we're not actually coding today. I'm sharing with you guys projects that I give my students that help them build on the fundamentals to give them a strong foundation. Before I dive in and share these projects, do me a favor, click that like button and subscribe, as that really does help me a growing channel reach more people around the world. And guys, if you wanna get my handcrafted Python and Git starter pack, absolutely free. It's the first link in the description. This is the same guide that I give to my students on their first day of class that pairs really well as they go through the fundamentals of programming. All right, now as I mentioned, we're gonna go through five beginner projects today. These are in a particular order, they are, all right, as they build on each other, okay? We're only using pure Python, no outside frameworks, all right? So this is a really good chance to test yourself. Have you been learning the right things? Do you understand the fundamentals before getting into anything too advanced? All right, without further ado, let's dive into the first Python project, our first project I love to give my students is something to strengthen your understanding of control structures in programming. You could do a chatbot or you could do rock, paper, scissors. In this simple program, all right, you're putting your skills to the test. You're learning about a built-in Python module. We are learning about our control structures, the while loop, how to effectively use the while loop. We have some built-in functions that you should be knowing at this point, right? Print, input, int, len, right? All these built-in core Python functions are being put to the test. Now, this also involves your understanding of control structures. It's the way we control our logic, our data, right? For control structures, we have loops and we have conditional statements. And you can see here that in this project, we're using conditional statements to choose along the way, as well as having our expressions. These are our logic within our code. So this is a great project that if we run here, it just puts your basic understanding of Python to the test while working with the computer. If we say here, rock, enter, you can see that I win. Well, no, I lose. <laughs> I chose rock, the computer chose paper, I win. Do you wanna play again? I could say yes. This time, let's say paper right? Um, I win this time, all right? We can close it out. So this is a basic use case. And if you guys feel this is too easy, right? You could use object-oriented programming, right? Taking another key concept of Python up a level. Take everything we've learned, put it in functions, put it in a class. It does the same thing. Wonderful, guys. Heading on now, I need you guys to test your understanding of data structures. Right? And here in this channel, we've covered a lot of data structures, specifically the four built-in ones, list, tuples, dictionaries, and sets. All right. Now the next project that I usually give my students is a project that builds on the first project right, of control structures. It could have been a chatbot. It could have been a rock, paper, scissors game. The second project, I wanna create more like a database system, a database that can hold and store user information. Now, this database is gonna test your abilities and your understanding of dictionaries and lists while continuing to work with all those control structures we've been using. Here you can see I have my example, right? And my database is really just a dictionary. If you wanna take it up a level, you could try and do a notes, a text file, right? Or a CSV file as well, right? But here as these are beginner projects, a dictionary is great as this can hold a user's last name as well as their first name, occupation, a list of their hobbies as well as their age. Now in our program, you can see that we have the ability to list all the users. I could add a user, delete a user, or search for a user. 
And effectively, this is a program that's going to continue to loop and manage our database, this dictionary up top. Let me run this. Let's get some interaction here. So let's begin by saying I want to start, all right? And let's just say, let's list all the users, so one. And you can see their username, this is like their surname, and all their abilities or their information for that user, right? If I were to continue on here, then you can see the interaction. Let's go with add a user. Okay, so let's say uh, Doe, right? Their first name is Jane, that's pretty obvious. Occupation, say like doctor. Hobbies, separated by a comma, right? So how can we create a list from this? Ski, travel, uh, food, enter. Age, let's say 25, done. Now it says the user has been added successfully. If you run your program, you can go through it and you can see our user, our database coming to life. All right, uh, very quickly here, if we just run this, let's say I wanna delete a user, right? Who do I wanna delete? Enter a username, let's say Jane Doe. That is just the basic setup for a database that you can use for project two. All right, moving on. This brings you guys into your third project. And at this point, I like to teach my students the ability of code modularity. Right? How can we reuse code in programming? Well, in Python, we have multiple ways. We have modules, we have functions, and then we have classes. All of these are an example of reusing our code. In this third project, I like to give them a to-do list to create a basic to-do list using everything you've learned in the first two projects. The only new tactic here is reusing code, the introductions of functions into your code. Right, so here I have a to-do list and all of my code is stored in functions because here we're really trying to emphasize the ability of reusing your code. So I have a display menu, we have a function to add tasks. Now notice that I'm using type hintings, right? This is now showing a new skill being more specific. And the only real data structure we're using here, right, is I'm just using a list. Okay, there's nothing outside that's really taking effect here. So the new skill you're using is functions. When we run this code, you're gonna see the creation of a basic to-do list. Okay, so let's go through here. Let's say add a task. Let's say walk the dog. Okay, let's add another task. Let's say homework. Okay, and let's uh, add one more. Let's say code with Josh. Okay, and since we're here, I'm gonna add one more and say subscribe. All right, so we have these four tasks. I could view all the tasks. This is my to-do list. And you can see here that these are the tasks in our to-do list. So let's, for example, tick off walk the dog. I've already walked the dog today. Champ, hi buddy. Right, We've, there he is. <laughs> We've already walked him. So let's mark that off. Let's say two. Mark complete, what do you want to do? So enter the task, so walk the, or enter the number of the task. Excuse me, that's the first task, one. So now when we go through and view my tasks again, you can see that walk the dog has been ticked. Let's mark another task, let's say two. Okay, so what do we want to do? Four, subscribe to Code with Josh. And then you can see here when we view all of our tasks, those two have been marked off. And don't worry guys, you still have the ability, let's say I wanna delete a task. Well, I've completed walk the dog, so I can remove that. Four, you can see that that's been taken off my list. This is a great showcase of your skills to now implement functions, and especially defining your own functions to further enhance your code. All right guys, this is your third project. Let's start to build up now. All right, I'm gonna introduce some advanced projects, not too advanced, just the ability of using APIs as well as object-oriented programming. Moving on to your fourth beginner-friendly Python project is creating a simple weather API. This is gonna showcase everything you've learned so far, right? So all previous three projects using functions and reusable code, as well as now learning about APIs and how we can use them, right? So here you can see I have a basic weather application. I'm using imports, I'm creating my own functions, as well as using APIs to get 
and fetch responses from these, right? This is returned to us in what we call JSON data. This is going to be great to practice your understanding of dictionaries in Python, as JSON data is very similar to dictionaries, right? So when I run this code, we are gathering all of our weather information in this function, right? And so this is going to teach you the ability and how you can access this JSON data. So for example, if I enter a city, let's say Tokyo, okay, you can see that it's showing me the current temperature, the current weather of Tokyo, right? If you guys want to take this up a level, which is more an intermediate advanced project, and I do have this on the channel, Code with Josh already, you could create a desktop application for this weather API, right? This is really going to take your skills up. So for example here, if I bring in this weather app, I could put this whole code, I could put all of our code as the backend to our weather application. And then here within this weather application, right, let's go with uh, Ho Chi Minh City search, you can see the weather being displayed for Ho Chi Minh City, right? If we update this, right, Miami, okay, we have a live weather app. So this building of a weather app, this is GUI, graphical user interfaces. This is a bit more than just beginner friendly, all right? But you can see how these beginner Python projects, they build on your foundations and you can use these to build on top of, right? Reusing your projects. All right, guys, this is our last project. What is it? Object-oriented programming. This carries us into our final beginner-friendly project that I have here, guys. This is going to be a text-based adventure game that really uses your skills of object-oriented programming. At this stage in Python, you should have learned all the fundamentals. Control structures, functions, modules, data structures, right? Once we have these four abilities, these four fundamentals, we can wrap them up into object-oriented programming. So here's our project, right? And this project uses object-oriented programming. We're starting off here with your understanding of modules. I have a class for my pirate, right? So for example, Captain Jack Sparrow, he's a pirate. He's going to be fighting enemies, a text-based adventure game. So I'm using classes where we're using our understanding of functions, right? We're using our understanding of our logic here, creating control structures. We addressed inheritance. I'm inheriting pirate into my other class, sea creature. Okay. The real advantage of this project is we, I'm still using data structures here. I'm still using my control structures to interact with this game, right? When I run this, let's just do a very basic run. We're going to have the ability, right? My guy is up here. It's a pirate, Captain Jack. And then we have a list of enemies that we can attack. So do I want to play? You find yourself on a deserted island, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yes, I want to play. Okay, let the battle begin. Will you engage in combat? Yes. I can go through here and Captain Jack is ultimately fighting, right? You can see that he killed the enemy Siren, okay? Um, I can end this here and I can just say no, and it just kind of ends our text-based game. This is the great final project as OOP, object-oriented programming, that really ties your understanding of the fundamentals together. There you go, guys. Those are the five beginner-friendly Python projects that are only going to help you further your understanding of the Python fundamentals. Well, there you have it, guys. Those are my five beginner-friendly Python projects. I know there's more out there, and I'm sure there's a few of you in the comments, oh, these aren't beginner-friendly, but they are, okay? What you need at this stage in your learning journey are projects that build incrementally on each other, that only strengthen your understanding, all right? These are five projects that I have curated over the years, and I have given to my students that specifically do this. They grow on each other. It's not too advanced because that's just going to throw you off. All right, which of these projects have you guys done? Drop a comment and let me know. And also share with me, what other beginner-friendly Python projects have you guys done maybe in your Python journey? Guys, remember, if you wanna get my handcrafted Python and Git guide, 
It's absolutely free, as well as all the other resources I have for you guys. They're the links in the description. Head on down there and check out the links. They do help me out and do me a favor, like and subscribe to the channel as that helps me reach more students around the world. Today was all about beginner-friendly Python projects. Guys, I have 2D game development, I have app development and so much more over on the channel. Head on over and take a look. Until next week, Python crew, this was today's episode of Code with Josh. I'll see you next week.